Hi, everybody. It's Bert from Season Gaming, and we're back with another BitCast. We're at BitCast 29. I'm joined, as usual, with Ains and Dan. And today, we're going to be going over Gamescom news that has happened this past week. Our main topic today is going to be a fun one, and it's pretty much the best games that you can buy for under 20 bucks. This is our opinion. This is not fact, obviously. And we're going to have our typical collectibles, and we have our season reflections, as we always like to do for a fun side of things. I'm going to kick it off with a bit of Gamescom fun, and between each one of us, there was a lot of trailers that we saw. Did you guys have any particular fun trailers that you saw that you just fell in love with, or maybe a game you didn't think you cared about, but now you love it? Dan, let's kick it off with you. What do you think? Uh, there was one that I, I, I wasn't really expecting. I think it was called Hunt Showdown. Yeah. Was, yeah, that one looks actually pretty cool. I really don't know all the specifics, obviously, but um, just watching that trailer, that was just kind of a nice little surprise. Um, obviously, I would have liked to have seen like a cyberpunk one that everybody else got to see. That is <laughs> seems to be like the coolest thing ever. But in Metro Exodus, that game looks insane. But, yeah, looks awesome. Yeah, it does. It does. Ains, how about you? Uh, Doom Eternal, I think for sure. Um, massive Doom fan, and, and it just looks uh, it looks even more over the top and crazy than than the last one. Really excited about the PUBG 1.0 release and Sanok, or I think that's how you pronounce it, Sanok. Uh, and then the um, Metro Exodus as well looks incredible. So I, I haven't even played the original Metro, shame, shame. But um, Dang. I, I, I think I started one, but I never finished them. But um, this one looks really, really good. It's a shame it's coming out on that day where everything else is coming out. Yeah, I mean, you guys stole all the fun ones that I that I liked a lot from uh, Gamescom, but I was going to go with Doom Eternal. Um, I think we all knew it was going to be fun. We just didn't know uh, what we were going to expect out of it, but the gameplay, the action, the weapons, everything just looks awesome in it. I think the total trailer time this time was like six minutes, so plenty of uh, demon killing action. So our main news today, we're not going to go through news specific articles that have kind of happened in the, in the last two weeks. We're going to be covering specifically what we saw from Gamescom. We're going to be going over the highlights. So if you're looking for every little piece of stuff, it's not going to have it in our news today. We're just going to have the high points that we felt were at Gamescom. So I'm going to go ahead and kick it off with the first news story. And it has to do with actually what Ainge just mentioned. So PUBG is finally getting its 1.0 release. Um, we're going to be getting some fun stuff from it. We are getting, well, first of all, let me start on the date. So the date's going to be uh, September 4th. Let me look at my notes. So September 4th is the 1.0 release. We're getting the Sandhawk map and war mode. And uh, Ains, you, actually, let me uh, segue it over to you. You're uh, always keeping up with the PUBG news. But what's war mode? So we can explain that to everybody. Yeah, so war mode is a 50 versus 50 deathmatch where you can respawn. You get points for doing certain things. So when you kill someone, for instance, you get a point. Um, and then it's there's a uh, accumulation of points. Whatever team gets the most points or a certain total of points first wins. But um, you apparently, I haven't played it myself, but apparently you start 50-50 like normal. And then when you respawn, you kind of fly in and drop back down in with your team. And uh, it's supposed to be really, really fun. They demoed it on or uh, baited it on PC a while ago. And uh, people are a pretty big fan of it. So there's... Um, there's supposed to be some uh, kind of events around it, like war mode events. And then they're also doing, which we don't really have the details of yet, but they're doing a Sanok um, uh, kind of battle pass. So I don't know if that's going to be similar to Fortnite, where you can pay like five bucks and get a whole bunch of cosmetics or whatever else. But we'll see what that entails. Yeah, we kind of have seen a little bit of more, I wouldn't call it microtransactions, but more things you can purchase in the game, and it's not going to change anything. It's more visual. Curious if they're going to move in that Fortnite mentality. That's kind of how they're going to need to make money anyways from it. Yeah. So, Dan, are you, uh, you, you, don't, you don't play PUBG too much. I mean, I think you've played a few times, but I yeah. can tell you're super excited about that 1.0. That 1.0. No, you know what? I played it with Ains and a couple other guys the other day. And oh, it, it was hilarious. Actually, it, was, it was good. You know, I mean, I was terrible but it was actually really really fun it was actually you know, it, 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 for games like that yeah it, it's one of those it's one of those okay. games that uh you kind of make the fun with what whatever's going on there's like the crap that happens while you play just a game not even the gunplay is just always hilarious but we were was, we were fun. me and uh trey and a few others were like you know Got this attachment, this attachment, this gun here. Come on, man. We've got enemies at 340 moving on the hill. You know, we're just calling. Dan's like just running in a circle like, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But I had a good time. 
it was yeah. definitely a learning curve in that game. <laughs> so, sure. and uh, by the way, the game's in a whole different state <laughs> than it used to be when it for first sure. launched. So if uh, even if, even though we are not at 1.0 release yet, it's like in another week and a half or so. Uh, the game is in a whole different state than it than it was at launch. So it's real smooth right now. Yeah, it's good. Okay, moving over to our next one, uh, Devil May Cry Five. I think a lot of people have been excited for this franchise to kind of have kind of a reboot. I wouldn't say it's a complete reboot. Uh, the last game was kind of a different take on Dante and art style and stuff, but this one's looking to go back to some of the um, I don't know classical Devil May Cry as you can call it. We do have a uh, release date now, which was kind of the big news from the trailer. It is March eighth of twenty nineteen, as if that time frame wasn't crowded at already uh but it did look like a lot of fun if you watched any of the uh inside xbox interviews uh that was kind of one of the funnier interviews from gamescom but the uh, overall trailer looked like a lot of fun i think a lot of people are excited about it yeah i haven't played devil may cry since the first one but this one looks i mean well, i mean no no me I'm, I'm not laughing i'm laughing with you because i'm the you same understand. Way. if i, I start laughing right now this is going to be a horrendous <laughs> thing i haven't touched it since the first one either yeah and i really did like the first one i just never you know but it just never really grabbed me but this the trailer looked awesome and you know it, it always you got to have that good trailer to kind of keep people interested and kind of you know get them to come back i might try it out who knows yeah, so if you haven't played the last game, and funny enough, I liked the last game quite a bit. It, it played really, really well. Sure, Dante was different than he has been in the previous games, and if you guys haven't played since one, it, you guys aren't going to care too much. But there was obviously four other games before the most recent reboot, which was a reboot, um, and they all kind of had the same look and feel to them. Um, they're a lot of fun. It's, it's free on Game Pass right now if you want to take a look at it. It is the full special edition. Um, so maybe play one or two levels to see if the gunplay interests you. But um, this one looks really cool. I mean, the, from everything from a graphical to gameplay expect, uh, um, expectation that we're kind of looking for, I think it looks pretty good. So um, another big um, kind of, I wouldn't say it's a, it's a surprise, but I think folks that attended Gamescom were pretty excited about it. So Sekiro um, was available for uh, for actual gameplay abilities that you could do at the, at the conference. So that was a big deal. We also got a uh, launch day for that one. It is March 22nd, 2019. Um, if you're a big collector hunter type uh, person, there's also a statue uh, collector's edition on the way. So make sure to get your hands on that as well. But um, I love what I'm seeing so far. It's more of the faster gameplay from From Software. So um, I was super excited to see more of uh, Sekiro. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over this one. This one I'm really excited for. I actually shout out to the Prepare to Try guys because they played it and I watched their 20 minute video the other day of gameplay. And um, it looks like a mix between Neo and Dark Souls. Uh, and Neo was already kind of along the Dark Souls line, but it looks like uh, Dark Souls and Samurai, which is kind of what we expected from From Software. And I'm, I'm just, I'm ready to play it already. It'll be fun. Yeah, it looks cool, but you know, hard pass. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah. For, other, for people that like the Tenchu series, this this gameplay had a lot of Tenchu in it, um, in my opinion. There's a lot of that uh, gameplay element to it. Um, and I also like the, um, I guess you call it a grappling hook? What, what do you call it? What are they calling it, Ains? I, I don't know. Oh, God, I don't know. Yeah, I have yeah. no idea. So I, I don't know. I like that gameplay. Like I said, I, the one thing I don't like about the From Software games is how slow the main character moves. So when Bloodborne came out, Love that aspect of it, and this game looks more down my alley versus uh, the the Dark Souls game. So, gameplay looks cool, and we have a release date. So, on the kind of uh, same gameplay style, so Surge Two did have a bit of gameplay at um, at Gamescom as well. We hadn't really seen too much of it before. We've only heard that it was on the way, and the developer is kind of a fan favorite right now. A lot of people like uh, this developer. Um, we don't have any look at a release date or anything. It's the first time we saw combat. Uh, this one seemed to have more of an outdoor feel versus kind of the indoor feel that the first one had. But I think a lot of people are excited about this one. We didn't expect to see gameplay at uh, Gamescom. Yeah, I played, uh, I think we talked about it a few months ago, but I played a lot of Surge. I think I'm right near the end. I just never finished it. Um, it it was okay. It, it had that Souls feel and the whole type of setup. Had some cool customization ideas, but... It was uh, rather shallow from the environmental perspective. The combat got really repetitive. And so I think that's why they were highlighting kind of in that forest area in this new gameplay because, um, you know, they're trying to show that they're expanding it for part two. So we'll see what they do. I'm not hugely excited for it, but I'll check it out. All right. 
<laughs> yeah, guys. So for for everybody that's kind of hearing Dan's short answers here, he's not a big fan of this genre. It's not his, it's not his favorite. So, but I, I, I did I, I did play a little bit of the first one. Yep, like first level, and uh, it was really really hard for me to do anything. So <laughs> it's yeah, basically lack of skill and reflexes. Totally but, fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It but nice. I, but I think you uh, appreciate the games for what they I are. I do so there's for always sure. That kind of stuff. Um, one of the things about the surge that, uh, in kind of in the vein of what Ains was just talking about, is there is a surge one. It was very repetitive until you got to the bosses. The bosses were the only things that were kind of different, and so I kind of fell across the same thing. You play kind of the same type of enemies over and over, then you come to a newer enemy type, and then that one will start showing himself over and over and over. But it was a good attempt. I, I think that uh, part two may have some more freshness to it, um, and it's it's definitely fun. So. If you haven't played it again, try it. It's usually very cheap everywhere, regardless of mm -hmm. what platform you're trying to play it on. Um, the next one. So we have more at a, a bigger look at Ori. So if you didn't play the first one, um, I believe the first one's Ori and the Blind Forest, and this one's Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So um, we don't have a release date based off what we saw at Gamescom, but we did see a lot more gameplay. There's also a new mode that was introduced, and it's called the Spirit Trials. And so this is very similar to, I guess, the... Uh, the Mario game that was on the Wii U, uh, where you could kind of play together with your party. Um, and it seems to have that, but this seems to be catering more to the speedrun folks. It's more of a contest to get to the uh, end of the trial, I guess, as you call it, um, as fast as you can. Looks really cool, looks beautiful. We're, we got to play this at uh, E3, not the speed trials, but we got to play the game and we were super excited from what we saw. Yeah, I love Ori. I mean, I, I haven't finished it yet, but I've been actually a little, like it, it's in my rotation, kind of like a permanent place until I finish it. You know, I'll play a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and then I'll just throw on Ori for, you know, an hour. And I really wish I'd played this a lot sooner. Um, you know, playing it now makes me very, very excited for the new one because it looks gorgeous. Yeah, it's it's stunning. This is a day one purchase for me. 2D challenging platformer that's hand drawn, gorgeous art style. It's like might as well have designed it for me. Day one. Yeah, we'll be playing this with the X now. So for people that have the X, we'll be getting, um, I believe, a full 40, uh, 40, it is. <laughs> 40K. 40 40K. Yeah, we're, K. Not, we're not there yet. Uh, yeah, full uh, 4K HDR. I don't believe the first one is enhanced, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so you, it's still beautiful. So when you picture how good that one is and then you think of the next one that's coming, it's going to be even more just beautiful. So take a look at that one if you haven't played it. Ains, I'm not even going to try to explain this one and how excited you are about the next story. So go for it. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Master Chief Collection X, uh, Microsoft announced that it's going into Game Pass. That was rumored a long time ago. So it's going into Game Pass on September 1st. Halo 1 through 4 uh, are on there. They're going to be enhanced in 4K, HDR, rework of the menus, the UI, uh, the multiplayer is all enhanced in the matchmaking. I've been playing it as part of the uh, Halo Insider program because um, that goes without saying while I'm part of that. And um, it's amazing and you will be shocked at how gorgeous these titles are especially halo 2 anniversary which got the rework earlier this generation it's absolutely stunning in 4k hdr and the uh fully expect the multiplayer to really kick up so if you think about a couple million people now getting this game for free and you have all these different multiplayer options across the four games um, it's just going to be a blast i am super super excited for this and um one additional note is they already confirmed that later in september they're um going to do the 4k hdr update on odst as well so if you remember people who bought master chief collection early on got odst for free due to some of the issues you can still get it even if you just play the game on game pass it'll be five bucks for odst to add on and you'll get the uh, enhanced version of that too so basically everything except for reach from a halo perspective uh, is going to be included here so yeah sounds good to me man i'm gonna probably play through all four of them so i've never played four all the way through, mm. I'm going to play, I think, all four of them, full 4K. Now, did they rework the, it was it was just a upgraded version. They didn't remaster everything. Is that no, it, yeah, it's, it's up res to 4K HDR. They yeah. touched up a lot of the assets, but it's not a full remaster like Halo right. 2 Anniversary was. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm down for sure. And, Dan, and uh, Halo 1 was a full remaster for the 360. And then Halo 2 was a full remaster, so almost almost remake to an extent, um, on the Xbox One. So you are getting a remaster of Halo 1 that was destined, or I should say originally uh, developed for the Xbox 360. So 
kind of an interesting thing there. But it's still, I mean, so here's the funny thing. Halo 4 looks amazing um, on uh, on the 360 as it is. I, I would argue it's one of the best looking games yeah. on the 360. It's gorgeous. Um, and so when you see it on the Xbox One, it feels almost like a current gen game um, when it's running in 4K and HDR and 60 frames a second. So. Really good news there. Um, if you haven't played any of the Halo uh, games and you have Game Pass or you just want to pick up this game, this is a must-buy if you have just even been interested in, in Chief and, and the Halo franchise. So it's it's got everything you need. It just needs reach. That's my favorite story from the Halo franchise all together. Yeah, everybody uh, on the Halo community is saying reach needs to be next. It won't surprise me, honestly, if they do it because they've said that Infinite is a ways out yet. So it wouldn't surprise me at all if they surprise us by uh, adding Reach sometime next year. Yeah, I would take Reach over ODST personally, but ODST is great too. So, yeah. all right, um, next story, and this was a bit of a surprise. So there's a game coming out called Desperados 3. Um, the developer here is THQ Nordic. And if you're wondering what games they've done, they are currently working on Darksiders 3. So um, they, I would describe this game as close to possible as Red Dead Redemption. Um, it seems to take a little bit more of a, um, I would almost say arcadey style versus like a serious style. It's it's a mix between realistic and cel shaded graphics. It looks pretty fun. And from what we've heard, this game has been in development for actually quite a while, if not actual full development, but at least it's been talked about, planned, and we're going to be getting it in 2019. So no official release date, but the trailer looks like a lot of fun. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and check out our page um, and see what you think about it. It looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check it out because I didn't know there was a Desperados one and two, so <laughs> fantastic! All right, yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, it sounds good, but I mean, I, I I actually can't speak on this one too much. No, me neither. Um, yeah. I'm aware that I saw the news that it was being made, but I didn't really research it at all. So um, cool, and I'll yeah. check it out. <laughs> hey, you you might want to check out that trailer. <laughs> Take a look at it. Where can I check out that trailer? <laughs> <laughs> He's in the gaming. Um, okay, so our next uh, story. Uh, this was actually a huge surprise for me, and I'm very excited about it. So if you have not, let me start be before I even talk about the current anthology on the way. If you have not played Until Dawn on the PlayStation 4, it is fantastic. It's a lot of fun. Play it with your friends, family, significant others. It's, it's super fun. A lot of familiar faces from actors in that game, and kind of the way the story develops in that one is a lot of fun. As I say that, there is a new anthology coming from Supermassive. Um, they're going to be making kind of, I think it's a trilogy, not not, or maybe it's more than a trilogy because they are calling it an anthology. Um, the first game of this anthology is called Man of Medin or Medan. I don't know how you say that <laughs> properly, but um, they are also going multi-platform on this. So I did mention the PlayStation 4 for Until Dawn. It was kind of an exclusive for the PlayStation 4. This new anthology coming out is going to be multi-platform, so that's kind of a big deal. And the first uh, game from it is, uh, as I mentioned, Man from Medan, and it is coming in 2019. So that's something super excited to get. Uh, especially if you are in a kind of a horror game, kind of a slump, if you've been looking for something to play in that realm, this looks like it's right down your alley. Yeah, I'm really excited for this. Until Dawn, as you said, is, is excellent. I played that with my wife, actually. It's like playing through an 80s slasher movie, pretty much, and uh, had a ball with that. And when I saw the trailer for this and the announcement of an anthology that was also multi-platform, just really, really excited. So I'll be keeping my eye on this man at the name. <laughs> Madan. <Man of Medan. laughs> yeah, I saw. I saw. This is basically the one with the people on the that are scuba diving. Is that right? Yep. So, okay. Yep. That that yeah. is the one. Literally, the first thing that came to my mind was uh, this is basically oxen free with millennials, but that's. I don't know why it popped in there. I just saw these people like sitting on a boat, like drinking like their, you know, bud ices and. Yeah, whatever. Zimas. Zimas. Yeah, Zimas. Zimas. <laughs> I was like, what is this? But I haven't played until dawn, so I've oh, got man. it. But you know, I'm not a huge horror person. So, but this one sounds it sounds more campy from what you guys are saying from other yeah. people who said. So I might give that a shot. Um, I'm always up for trying anything new, so we'll see how it goes. You know, and they, but there's no solid release date. Is that right? Just like 2019. All they said was 2019, so we don't yeah. know exactly when. We shall see. Super yeah, awesome. check out Until Dawn. There's there's a few jump scares, Dan. I know you're not the biggest horror fan, but um, it's also Some not very us. gory. So um, I don't know. I think it's a good 80s slasher of, you know, exactly what Ains mentioned. It's not too crazy. So I think you'll like it. I'll try it out. 
Okay, uh, Life is Strange 2. We did get some uh, actual gameplay on this one. Now, this is different uh, as far as main characters go. It looks like they're just going to be telling another story kind of in the same universe. Uh, as far as dates, we also did get a firm date, and it's right around the corner. If I'm not, no, actually, it's 2019. So uh, September 27th, 2019. Um, and like I said, at Gamescom, we did see some gameplay. There has been some other games that have come out. There was kind of a prequel to uh, Life is Strange that, in case you're confusing that one, and there was a, a more of a recent one that was, um, it's called Captain something. Um, Spirit. Yeah, Captain, Captain Spirit. Spirit. Um, it's in the same vein, same universe type game. So if, uh, if you're trying to get confused on all those, this is actually a, an actual numbered sequel to the game. I got nothing. Yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> so, I'm yeah, sorry. So, I, I, I don't I haven't played Life is Strange. I've heard yeah, so, about um, the story, but... A lot of people did like Life is Strange, and that's why we're kind of mentioning it. It was kind of a big deal. Um, I've had numerous friends that kind of enjoyed it quite a bit, and um, there you go. There's a sequel coming. That's yeah. all I can mention on that I wish one. I could say more, but yeah, I got nothing. Yep. So one of the most anticipated <laughs> games that we were wanting to see more about um, at Gamescom is Cyberpunk. So uh, at E3, they had kind of like a secret, um, I guess, just for the media. They showed a lot of gameplay. People were able to see it. Um, as far as to the public, there was simply a trailer that was shown. Kind of the same thing happened here at Gamescom. There was a newer trailer that was very similar to the one shown at E3. So to the public, not too much, but they did kind of once again have another behind the scenes uh, demo for media once again. Um, the main difference about this actual uh, announcement is that they let some screenshots out. Um, and if you have not seen those either, we have those on our page. We have a whole story and we have kind of links to all the, uh, to the screenshots in high res. So you can definitely take a look at those. Still looks amazing. Um, one of the other big stories from the news at Gamescom is that the game is fully playable now from start to finish. Now, that doesn't mean everything's polished, ready to go, but uh, they have mentioned that the game is getting closer to finish. Once again, no release date, and they've simply said it'll be done when it's done. So we're going to have to be super patient here, but this is the game to be excited for in the future. Oh, yeah. This one, just, you know, I, I've been looking forward to this since that first, you know, teaser trailer, you know, way back in... 1982 or whenever the hell it was <laughs> but th th this game i mean just because it's by cg cd project red you know with their you know with the witcher 3 being one of my favorite games of all time switching into first person don't care whatever i know these guys they said it was a 50 minute demo for one mission that's mm -hmm. insane so yeah just shut down everything else for like two or three months once it, once this comes out that's basically all I'll be playing. Probably yep. times over. I'm in the same camp. Um, this is a day one, take off of work for a week, yep. lock myself in a room type game. Um, <laughs> this is uh, Jez Corden, a guy that we chat with quite a bit for over at Windows Central, said that, um, I think he had a quote the other day saying that the um, scope of this game is staggering, that it's so far beyond any other game right now that uh, it's almost hard to believe. So that doesn't surprise me. I think they're going to blow the doors off. And um, I don't even know if I really want to see a whole lot from it. Um, yeah. I'm starting to think I may just go dark from the start. Um, one other real quick thing, I don't want to take too long, but um, if you like art and you have hundreds of dollars laying around that you've got nothing to spend on, um, Cook and Becker is doing some limited edition Cyberpunk 2077 prints, official um, with CD Projekt Red and the author. Um, some really neat stuff out there, but they're not cheap. But you can find those on cookandbecker.com too. Cook and Becker. <laughs> All right, uh, next one. And this is uh, kind of good news for people that have not already pa uh, purchased the Dark Souls remaster, but there was an announcement of Dark Souls Trilogy coming. It's going to be all in one package. That's one through three with all DLC included. It is coming to the States. We do have a date of October 19th, and it is going to be for $80. So if you have not purchased that, once again, maybe you've been wanting to uh, pick up the Dark Souls uh, trilogy. Now's the time to get it in October. So once again, all three full remaster for the first one and all DLC for $80. Well, wow, they're really milking it, aren't they? Mm -hmm. it's, it's the Skyrim of this, of this gen, I would call it. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, it's cool, you know, um, but $80 uh, for three games, one that came out, what, seven years ago, eight years ago? Uh, maybe longer, actually. I don't know. Um, but it, it just seems like a lot. Uh, I would think $60 at most for, for these three nowadays. Um, but, I mean, I guess if if you haven't played them, like you said, and you want to get all three in a single package, there you go. Yeah. 
<laughs> Damn <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, um, another one that we all kind of talked about was our one of our favorite trailers is uh, Metro Exodus. There was a bit more kind of shown on it. It's a new trailer. It still looks beautiful. That's all you can really say. They really haven't divulged too much. There really hasn't been like long panels with the developer on the game. Um, but we did get a um, kind of a, another release date that we've already kind of talked about as far as this time of the year is going to be kind of nuts. So February 2nd, um, I guess Q1 of 2019 is going to be nuts if the fall wasn't already nuts enough. So if you haven't seen the trailer, take a look at it. Looks as beautiful as it always does, even though it's kind of a dystopian time. It's it's going to be kind of a graphics pusher at the end of our generation here. Sorry, Bert. That's uh, February twenty second, not second. Oh, okay. February twenty yeah. second. My bad. Because it's uh, it's that crazy day with Metro Crackdown, Days Gone, and Anthem all on the same day. Um, which is we're playing that day. No, it's absurd. I mean, I'm 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 going to be on Anthem more yeah. than anything else personally but it's kind of a shame because I, I really worry that um metro is going to get looked over um simply because anthem has all the hype behind it crackdown is going to be on game pass right so if you're on xbox and a few million people with game pass will try that automatically and days gone is uh the next big sony exclusive so those are automatically going to get some play time I'm, I'm really worried that metro will get looked over and it's a shame because it looks absolutely incredible so i hope it stands out yeah, it might be where people go for the single player experience because a lot of that stuff you mentioned, I think people are going to be looking at it from a multiplayer standpoint, with the exception of maybe Days Gone, uh, maybe yeah. even Anthem. I wonder if people approach that game from a multiplayer or single player standpoint, but I don't know. When you get a day like that, though, it's, it, it, it kind of just yells, wait to buy it until. Yeah, wait till later on sale. Yeah, yeah. yeah. twenty bucks. So two months later, right? Yeah, and, and the funny because you know it looks amazing. I know they're putting a lot of work into it, but it's a bad day, man. Yeah the the first metros um, the the first one and the second one you can get that on sale all over all over the place whether you're on PC or console it's always super cheap mm -hmm. and the remasters are dirt cheap too. I think actually one of them is on was on Game Pass. I'm not sure if it's still there anymore. It is. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I forget which one as well. Yeah. Yeah. They're fantastic though. If you're looking for like that immersive, that's a, uh, we had talked about games that felt like uh, Bioshock. This one comes pretty close to it. Um, as far as putting you in that environment and making you feel like you're there. This one's really good at it. Hmm. Um, okay. So battlefield five. So the open beta has, was announced at gamescom. Uh, it's coming on uh, September 4th for EA access. If you're on PC, if you're an origin member, um, you can also play it there. It is going to be open to everybody else on September 7th. Um, as far as the game, there was a few more trailers that were shown on it. Um, it it's looking pretty good. If you're a Battlefield fan, this seems like a must-play around launch. Uh, but the big news here was the open betas. So I think we are all signed up. Dan, are you signed up for that? I'm not sure if you are. Uh, for the open beta? Yep. I have EA access. I'm assuming I yep. jump in there. Yeah. You, sh you should be good to go. <clears throat> I know that me and Ains have pre-ordered the actual game, so we're there. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped for it. Hopefully the three of us can get in there with some of our other friends and mix it up. But uh, really excited for this one. I think this is going to be probably the, the most multiplayer I played this fall along with PUBG. Cool. Um, Shenmue, uh, we, Shenmue 3, I should say, it did get an official release date, which kind of coincided with the release of the uh, ports that came on to the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. We're looking at it next year, um, almost around this time. So we're recording on the 25th of August. The game, uh, Shenmue 3, has a release date of August 27th of 2019. So kind of a weird release to kind of coincide with your, with your ports of 1 and 2. But uh, finally, release date for there. I think a lot of people are still on the fence of part three. Uh, the trailers we've seen so far are kind of very hit and miss for people. Yeah. Shame <laughs> you. <laughs> um, you, guys, you guys are killing me on this one. Uh, All right. So, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, Shimu, I, I, yeah, go I ahead, Ant. limited edition on Dreamcast, actually, right over here somewhere. Um, really liked it back in the day. I think I've said before, it's really dated nowadays. It, it was the first game that really tried some of those new open world elements and it's come so far in the past 15 plus years that they, they seem really dated. So I'm gonna be really interested to see if Shenmue 3 kind of takes that essence but really updates it with new mechanics and new content you know, for 2018, 2019. So we'll see what that looks like. I do think it's interesting that they're releasing in late August because obviously you'll get the cult classic fans buying it, but that's probably a smart move to get out in August before the huge fall rush of next next fall so we'll see how that one does could be interesting 
Yeah, and social media, um, part one and part two, the port that it recently released is selling really, really well. A lot of people have mentioned that uh, they tried to go to the store and they were already sold out. That could be either the retailer didn't get that many copies of the game. They maybe got maybe three or four copies and they all sold out. It also could be that it's just simply selling well. We'll have to wait and find out when the sales figures come out for it. But I hope it does well. It was a very beloved series back in the day. I'm not sure if it's evolved with the times as Ains was talking very, very well to where we are today. I hope that that's being considered in Shinmu 3 because the first trailer we saw about it after the whole Kickstarter situation happened um, was kind of poor. <laughs> it looked like something from last gen that um, wasn't ready for this gen. And with how late it's releasing in this generation, it's got to have something in it that's going to draw people to it outside of the, you know, the rabbit fans that have been waiting for a part three to come. So we shall see. Um, more news as we're kind of shuffling through this and, and moving quicker. So Doom e Eternal, um, as we all kind of mentioned, it was one of our favorite trailers from there. We're super excited about it. There was more gameplay shown. If you haven't seen the, uh, the trailers for Doom Eternal, looks amazing. Take a look at our page for that one. Um, THQ Nordic um, is bringing some of their games um, over to Steam. So this is kind of a, a, a big deal. Some of the games that we're talking about here are Super Lucky, ReCore, uh, Zoo Tycoon, they're all going to be hitting Steam back on, or I should say, in uh, September 14th. This is kind of a big deal because they were only available on Microsoft Store before, and obviously on consoles. Bringing it to Steam might be a big deal for those games. Yeah, so Doom Eternal, I think we already touched on. Um, massively excited for that. And I, I heard a, a, an interesting thing. So you know how you now have that kind of grappling hook to grab on enemies and kind of teleport around the environment? Apparently, that's an add-on just for the super shotgun. It's not something like you have all the time. So I think just thinking about it from a gameplay perspective, they are making it so you use that and get in close and then use the super shotgun. So um, that's that's really unique. I don't know. I can't wait to see more of it, but that's a day one buy as well. Um, around the Microsoft games, yeah, this is interesting. I mean, Super Lucky's Tale, Recore, Zoo Tycoon, not, you know, obviously not some of the triple-A games from uh, Microsoft First Party, but neat that they're experimenting on Steam um, because, as you said, a lot of people just, a lot of PC gamers just only use Steam. They really refuse to use the Windows Store. So be interested to see how those perform over there. Yep. You know what? I just started playing Doom. The <coughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Xbox One. And uh, actually, I've been, I, it's kind of been one of those games that I, I play, I put down, I play, I put down, I play, I put down. I'm actually pretty close to the ending, I think. And it's just so nice to look at. It's it's so much fun. If, it, if they could just, you know, do that with Doom Eternal, then there's another one I'm gonna play the crap out of, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we love the we love the first one from gameplay, from the look, from the enemies, the level design. Yeah. It was just it was near almost perfect for us. So it's just a fun game. That's you know, you can't say that about a lot of games. Yeah, sure. it's just made to be fun. I hope I really hope they um, have multiplayer and that it's more polished. I like the first one's multiplayer. I'm one of the few who did, but I think they could do a lot more with it. So I hope they evolve it. Yep. And the last big uh, piece from Gamescom, there's obviously a lot of other stuff. These are the high points for us, is uh, Ace Combat 7. So if you are an Ace Combat fan, I've loved this uh, since the first one. They, they've always been fun, even on handhelds. But we finally got a release date for this one. Um, it is coming January for uh, sorry January 18th of 2019. It is multi-platform, so take a look at this trailer. It looks amazing. Um, if you're into airplanes and kind of having an itch for airplane games, which I personally am, I can't remember the last airplane game I've played in a long really? time. Um, check this trailer out. It looks fantastic. I mean, yeah. I mean, I yeah. I, I wanted a airplane game. I mean, you you, just, you don't see them anymore. You know, they, they used to be my kind of my favorite kind of games, is those simulations or even just the arcadey style, you know, like uh, Afterburner and stuff like that. Hmm. Flight you know, simulator. But yeah, flight simulator. Anything like that, you just don't see them. I know they, they've got a, a stick with it, too, a flight stick. Mm -hmm. Is that out already? I haven't seen it. I think that's coming out around the launch of the game, but I know that there is flight stick uh, options out today. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, we need something. <laughs> it's, been a, it's been a long, long time. Yeah, I'm not the biggest Ace Combat fan, but I know many people are, and they've been waiting for this one for a long time. So cool to see it finally getting a solid release date. 
Yeah, the the reboot that we would love to see is a new Crimson Skies. That would be yes. kind of an yeah, awesome, nice. awesome uh, remake, or not even a remake, a new reboot to the series. It'd be great. You know, okay, so we'll go ahead, Ains. Sorry, I was just going to say in that vein, it's hard to believe with all of the battle royale and multiplayer and competitive multiplayer that we do not have an, a really big scale um, flight multiplayer competitive game and car. Where the hell is Twisted Metal? Um, oh, yeah. You know, like, why don't we have a big game, AAA game in that vein um, on either of those two genres? It's baffling to me. Well, we saw that one at um, at E3, and I think it was called Badlands or something. That was a PC game where you start out in a car. Everybody's in a car. Like That's PUBG kind of a, with cars. Yeah. yeah it, it was kind of a cool looking thing. I hope that that becomes more mainstream. But to your point, I mean, it would be amazing if everybody could launch from like a some kind of a runway and you have just a battle in the skies and stuff like that. That yeah, would just multiplayer, amazing. you know, yeah. 10 on 10. I mean, you have on PC, you have world of, uh, of warships and world oh, of tanks, tanks obviously. Yeah. Um, they have that whole genre, but I mean, it's just weird that we don't have something in the vein of a battlefield or call of duty or anything like that with those genres. I, I think people are really, um, I see comments all the time. People saying, God, we need a new twisted metal or vigilante, you know, just, I don't know why we don't have it. Vigilante 8. That was yeah. a good game, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do know that um, the main developer from Twisted Metal has moved on to other things, so that's kind of a, a shame. Maybe they can get another developer to kind of jump in and take it over. But yeah. Okay, so that was everything that we kind of thought was a big story from Gamescom. Uh, not a lot of new things here from, from E3, so if you did watch a lot of our E3 coverage or if you personally followed E3, a lot of the things that have come out at Gamescom and just kind of expanded on E3 stuff, even the Nintendo stuff, which we didn't touch on too much, there was really nothing new from it outside of new Super Smash Brothers characters and skins that are coming out, or um, Echo characters, as they call them. But um, take a look at our page if you want to hear more about E3 stuff. We did, or sorry, Gamescom stuff. We did cover it pretty well, um, and we have news just going down, and we even have it uh, tagged as uh, Gamescom, so you can take a look at it there. Um, we're briefly going to touch on developer news, and the big news from here, if you didn't look at our page or follow our news, is THQ Nordic, which is in our news a lot today. Um, did actually acquire the Time Splitters and Second Sight IPs. So Time Splitters is one of the most beloved shooters from what is it, the PS2 and original Xbox era. Um, this is probably a good sign for maybe a reboot, maybe a sequel. We don't know what's coming on. Second Sight, not as big of a following as Time Splitters, but it does have a pretty big following. I think we're all excited here for what may be coming in the near future. Yeah, I'm excited to see what they do with Time Splitters. They've already kind of alluded to the fact that they're working on it. Um, the only thing that kind of concerns me, and I think we mentioned this before, is that Time Splitters was really big in you know early 2000s, PS2, Xbox, as you said, and that um, split screen multiplayer. Um, you know, when kind of Halo One was out, it, we're 15 years past that now, um, and so the first person shooter genre has obviously taken over the world since then. So how a, a smaller development company is gonna make time splitters relevant, I'm not sure. One of the big things that um, was popular with the game was the map creation tools. So we'll see if they still have that in there and how they're gonna kind of bring that forward. But really excited to see it because I did love the games back in the day. Uh, second site I'm less familiar with. I mean, I know what it is, I remember it, but I didn't. I don't remember playing it, If I even if I did. So, um, but it, it's kind of, a, um, it's not really horror, but it's a, along those lines, right? Yeah, there's definitely kind of the um, paranormal, I guess you could call it, yeah, uh, yeah, feeling yeah. when you're playing the game. There was a few of these games during that generation that kind of took off, so maybe this is something that they'll do a reboot on, or maybe they'll just do a remake on it or something. It wasn't a bad game, it just wasn't you know as well received as the Time Splitters uh, franchise. Dan, anything from you on these? Did you play Time Splitters back I, in the day? Was, it, was there an arcade game like called Time Splitters? I don't know. No, I don't. Maybe you get a Time Crisis. I, know, I remember the game on the console, but maybe, yeah, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Time Crisis, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. I never actually played Second Sight, but, you know, hey, you know, if they can do it and make it relevant, like you said, Ains, then, you know, more power to them. We'll see how yeah. it works. More yeah. Options. This is me jumping into my memory really far back. So if I'm way off, uh, Ains or Dan, correct me here. But Time Splitters was kind of the spiritual successor to Perfect Dark and, and Goldeneye. A lot of the development team did move over to the Time Splitters thing, but, um, does anybody remember that or am I yes. not? No, no, you're right. Yeah. Some of the rare development yeah. team did work on the game. Um, I forget the name of the development company as well. There was a develop now defunct development company that 
had a part in it, but it was a trilogy and some of those key developers were part of it. Yeah. Yeah. So the, and the reason I'm mentioning that is because during the late nineties, everybody was playing GoldenEye Perfect Dark. Um, and then there was really kind of a drought of those games <coughs> for, uh, as far as that quality for a while and time splitters kind of picked up where they left off and tons of people were playing time splitters together. It was one of our favorite games to play here locally. So, um, you know, hopefully something happens from this THQ Nordic is kind of, a uh, growing pretty well. I hope that they continue to uh, have some good games in their uh, development cycle. Okay, so we're gonna talk about new releases and currently playing once again, this time of the year does not have a ton of new releases. That starts in just a month or so um, where things are gonna be kind of nuts and you're gonna hear us talking about new releases quite a bit, but stuff that has released um, in the last week or two, Walking Dead, the final season, episode one. It is scoring at a 78 strong on Open Critic. It's doing pretty well. If you have followed Clementine throughout the, all the other games, this is one to definitely check out. Um, the last one was not as well received as the previous two, but this one is supposed to kind of bring it back to where they were before. Um, the developer has kind of got a, a smaller team working on this than they have in previous games, so they're more focused. So hopefully this is good. Guacamelee 2, uh, scoring very well. It's at an 86 Mighty right now. Another game that if you play the last one, is more of the side-scroller uh, type game. You're supposed to like this one just as much, if not more. Uh, it's, it's a great sequel from what we're hearing, scoring really well. Uh, Shinmu 1 and 2, we did talk about it earlier. This is the port that has finally hit the modern consoles. It's not really a full remake or remaster. It's just been kind of cleaned up running in a... Uh, with the current gens of PlayStation 4 and Xbox One, scoring at a 79, which is a lot higher than I thought it was uh, it would score. Um, and then the last one, the big the big hitter at this time of the year, if you don't, uh, you know, it, it's the big deal. F1 2018 is out. Oh, yeah. Uh, came out yesterday, scoring an 84 mighty. I know Ains has been working on his uh, team and his build for the last uh, probably 48 hours. I know he got it early. 48 um, hours straight. 48 hours straight. Um, he actually hasn't played it all and avoids it, guys. But uh, my copy got lost yesterday at Best Buy. I'm waiting on an Amazon delivery today to kind of play it. I can't wait. Um, but those are the big games for the last couple of weeks. Let's talk about what we're currently playing. Let's kind of zoom through these as fast as we can. Uh, Dan, what are you up to these days? Uh, pretty much the same thing as I was playing last week. Uh, I was playing Madden. Uh, I started a league up on uh, Xbox with some guys from Twitter. Um, having some fun with that. I'm the only one that lost. First week, <laughs> score to safety. Thank you. Um, I played some We Happy Few, you know, and I, I read the uh, impressions, Ains, and like I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Like, there's something about it, and I can't figure out that joy mechanic. So mm. maybe we can talk about that at some point because it, it's really frustrating the hell out of me. Because um, I really, really want to like this game. I love the art style. I love, you know, you know, a lot about it you know but i'm really really struggling with a few little things and i think if i can clear those up it'll be fine uh and then doom that's just fun i just like shooting stuff <laughs> i crank it down to uh easy the you know whatever that you know big baby whatever it is when, and, uh, when you finish it, Dan, sorry to interrupt, but when you finish but, it on easy, for one yeah. second, just go back and play the first level on the hardest difficulty. I'll go with you, yeah. re Report back to us. Okay. Yeah. That's ridiculous. It'll be it'll be me and a lot of tears, probably. <laughs> but the game looks so good, you know, and that's one of the reasons I'm playing it, and it's just a lot of fun. So that's about it. You waiting on? Is it, is it my turn? Yeah. Is it my turn now? <laughs> <laughs> You're all right. Up, so primarily playing uh, F1 2018, um, as Bert said. Um, no, I'm kidding. I uh, still playing We Happy Few. So I wrote my. It's essentially a review. I wrote it as impressions, but I mean, I really kind of went into some detail on the game. So really enjoying it. Um, it, as I say in there very clearly, it has flaws. It's not a AAA game in that sense. Uh, in fact, I think I said the best way I could describe We Happy Few is it's a double A game with AAA aspirations. So there's a few bugs, as Dan said, you know, there's a few kind of confusing elements to it that can frustrate you. Um, but Dan, we'll get you fixed up, and sooner or later, you will be snug as a bug on a drug. Mm -hmm. Um <laughs> I'm playing uh, Warhammer Vermintide 2. It got added to Game Pass last month, I believe, and uh, having a lot of fun with that. So I'm playing that in co-op with my son. It's uh, If you're not aware of it, it's a four-player co-op action game. It's first-person perspective with fantasy elements. So it, it looks and feels a little like Skyrim. It's probably the best point of reference. 
but it's a lot of action. You play missions and you come back to kind of your home base and you get loot and you can pick different characters and upgrade your items. and uh, Just a lot of fun. A lot of fun to go in there, smash some heads about and uh, come back, level up your character and do it all over again. So really fun in co-op. And then uh, I checked out real briefly, I checked out another game that got added to Game Pass called Bruiner. And this is a top-down kind of isometric cyberpunk style game taking place in like that dystopian future and uh, a really violent and um, just just kind of interesting. I don't really know how to describe it. It's got that, um, like I said, cyberpunky and what's that game Shadowrun kind of feel to it where it's that, uh, that kind of dark future and you just go on missions and kill a lot of people. So um, it's kind of funny, but um, I'm enjoying that a little bit too. That's about it. Nice. And uh, Warhammer is from the Warhammer universe, if people aren't aware of that. It, it, it's traditionally a whole different type of game. So this is kind of a different take on it, which is supposed to be great. So I'm looking forward to playing that too. Yeah. So um, I, for some reason, have been on a racing mode <laughs> for the last three or four weeks. Um, I'm finishing up Dirt 4. I was always a huge fan of, of Dirt um, 1 through 3. And then Dirt 4 kind of brings it all together. Unfortunately, towards the end of every single class that you race, it can become kind of tedious. So I'm just trying to get through it just to get 100% on it. Um, I think I am probably should probably move on from that. But uh, it's, it's taken a long time. GT Sport, um, I've come back to this game. I initially played uh, about 20, 25 hours of the game um, when it was near launch, and I was not happy with the content that was there. They've come back and added tons of new modes, a lot of new cars for free. Um, and it just looks beautiful and plays pretty well. So if you are kind of on the fence about Gran Turismo, it's a whole different state than it was when it first released as they were only aiming for online. Now there's a lot of single player content. Um, F1 2018, I'll be playing today as soon as it gets delivered. Um, and then obviously PUBG we, has been kind of our multiplayer to go to um, when we need something to play and just a lot of fun and it has been streamlined really, really, really well. And then lastly, I'm finishing Uncharted 3 um, as far as uh, finishing through that whole series again. So um, tons of games we're all playing. Thankfully, we're all playing something kind of differently from each other. So we have uh, quite the gamut of games that we're playing. Um, okay, so let's jump over to our main topic. So our main topic today are what are three of your favorite games that you can currently buy for under $20? So kind of the, the bargain bin games that are just amazing games. Um, we're each going to go through one at a time. We're only going to spend about a minute or two on each of them and tell you, number one, why we think it's up there going to try to point you in the right direction of where you can get these if you're interested in any of these games. And um, that'll be about it. It'll be kind of a quick main topic today, I hope, um, to kind of let you guys know what's what's out there. So, uh, Ains, why don't you tell us one of your games um, that you think is the best under 20 bucks? Yeah, and, and really quick, we kind of combined on these, right? So a few of us agree, or we agree with each other on each other's selections as well. So we'll cover that. But uh, I'll give you one, and that's Sunset Overdrive. So this is a Game by Insomniac Games, uh, the people who are obviously making Spider-Man upcoming. And you can see in Spider-Man, they took some of the learnings from Sunset Overdrive and some of the movement mechanics, which is really neat. This game has a hilarious sense of humor, a fantastic art style. It came out, I want to say they're 20, I want to say 2015, I would think. You can check that if you want. But um, it's it's been around for a while because it's an exclusive and it was a new IP. It didn't sell as well as they were hoping. And it also was bundled with Xboxes for a while. So there's a lot of digital copies out there and codes you can get for under 10 bucks. The season pass, which added some new missions and new areas can be had on Xbox Live frequently on their sales for like four or five bucks as well. So you can get pretty much the total package, usually for less than $10, maybe 10 to $15 total. And you could easily get, you know, 30, 40, 50 hours out of it. And it just have a, excuse me, have a ball with it. A lot of customization, a lot of zaniness. And I uh, highly recommend it. Every time we talk about overlooked kind of exclusives, that's the one that jumps in my head. Yeah, Ains, by the way, that's October 2014. So, um, 2014. Oh, oh, yeah. so yeah, fantastic. Dan, how about you? All right, I'm going to go with Mass Effect Andromeda. And I think the reason it's so cheap is because it, you know, nobody liked it. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, been a, it's been a frequent conversation point on our right. podcast. And, you know, I, 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 <clears throat> I want to say, you know, it, it's it's to the level of the trilogy was. It's not, okay, and that's mostly, you know, due to the fact that it's just a whole different story, same universe. But I think a lot of people were upset, you know, that it really didn't connect those together. You could find it on sale on, you know, all the platforms for like fifteen, twenty dollars, 
you know, all the time. You can find it, I'm sure, in GameStop for used for nothing, next to nothing pretty much. And that's like the deluxe version where it gets you a couple extra things here and there. The multiplayer, never played it, you know, but it's there. But the amount of content that you can get out of that game. And if you're a Mass Effect fan, you know, look past the, the buggy facial animations. Who gives a crap? You know, the story, yeah, it's not great. It's serviceable. You know, it'll get you through. But for the price and what you get, you know, it was subjective. You know, I think it's a very, really, really good value. So. Yeah, from a Mass Effect standpoint, I think uh, the Mass Effect feel is there. Um, they yeah. have fixed all those issues, by the way. So if you played it at the start and kind of like, what the heck is this? It has been fixed up. So it, it's a great right. bundle. Just <laughs> to crack you up, it's on sale right now at Newegg for nine ninety nine, brand new. So ten bucks. Yeah, yeah, crazy. Uh, I have the deluxe edition still sealed that I got for eight bucks. The deluxe edition. Wow, that's hey. a crazy, crazy value. Yeah, you easily get 40, 50 hours out of this game. If you want to go oh, further easy. and do all the side, you can get 80, 80 to 100. So I enjoyed it as well. Great pick. Um, I'm going to go with Bloodborne. Um, so as we were just talking about from software earlier, I am not the biggest Souls fan. It takes me a lot to get into it, and I have to be in the mood to play Souls. Uh, Bloodborne has that faster feel, in my opinion. Um, I love the environments that you kind of go through, the gameplay, and I guess there's a, an overall story. You really have to dig deep um, to find the lore and the story of everything. There's a great YouTube channel that I followed when I was playing it that made me just fall in love with the game even further. Um, this game, is, it's, it's fallen into the PlayStation 4's greatest hits now, so you can find it new everywhere for like $19.99. It falls in sales all the time for under $15 new. I think GameStop has it between 10 and 15 bucks. eBay, you can find it used, preplayed for 10 to 15 bucks. So if you are into a challenge, um, it's not as hard as some of the Souls games, I would say, but as you get further in the game, some of the challenges become pretty tough. But I absolutely love Bloodborne. Check it out if you have it. Unfortunately, it's only a PlayStation 4 exclusive. You can't play it on PC or Xbox One, but it's it's worth the price of entry and that's some. So check it out. Yeah, fantastic game. Um... The, as you said, the gothic kind of what Lovecraftian style is uh, really unique. The art in that game is incredible. I didn't get past the tutorial. <laughs> the, the first werewolf in that room. I, I, what, what's a werewolf? I, I literally I have not even, I couldn't even find out where I was going. I walked around this place and uh, I picked up some stuff. There was some, some, some tutorial tips. And, and I, I basically, that's all I was doing. I think uh, I think we're gonna have Dan come over to my house here, and we're gonna do let's plays together, where I just comment awesome. on on Dan playing these hard yeah. games. And then I tune into you guys. That yeah. would be something special. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, but yeah, good value though. Okay, Dan, let's start out with you for your number two pick. All right, I'm gonna go with The Witcher Three, and this is again, you know, not only is it a brilliant game, it is for twenty dollars on sale normally. You can get, I think, that and the whole and and all the DLC, mm -hmm. which is a lot. The the deluxe version or whatever it is, or Game of the Year edition. It's the complete it's, edition. Yeah, complete edition. Yeah, it's it's huge. I mean, it's not just the two DLCs. It's a whole bunch of smaller DLCs, missions, you know, outfits and other little, you know, new game plus. I think that's free though anyway. But yep. um, there's a ton and just ton of content, and it's an amazing game. And I understand a lot of people, you know, it's hard to invest that kind of time anymore, you know, for me. So I'm glad I played it when I did. And, uh, but it, it's it's an amazing game for $20. You can get it, I think, for like 18 bucks or $17.99 at GameStop brand new, just the base game, you know, but the sales happen all the time. So just keep your eye out for it. If you can get it, pick it up. Totally worth it. Yeah, this would be number one for me by far. Um, you'll get... If you get the complete edition, you're going to get conservatively, if you've run through the game, you're going to get 120 to 150 hours of content. If you do everything, you're going to get 200 plus without blinking an eye. Um, yeah. I, I talk to people on Reddit who have over a thousand hours in the game because they've played through it two and three times. It's just that good. So yeah. The one problem I can tell you guys with Witcher 3 is when you start this game, you will not play any other games. <laughs> no. Even if you're playing Call of Duty's Battlefields, whatever with your friends, you're going to be like showing offline or you're going to be doing something else to where you just don't want to be bothered because you just want to keep playing the story. Yeah, so, you may get fired from your job. 
Um, <laughs> uh, one note we were talking about this before we started is if the complete edition and the regular edition, the saves do not uh, recognize each other. So if you start it on the regular edition and then you think, oh, I'll go back and buy the complete edition, it won't recognize your content. Yep. They're completely separate games for whatever reason. So just yeah. be aware. Just do the download, the DLC downloadable on the standard, um, the standard copy. Yeah. To do that. Right. Ains, what's your number two? Um, let's go with Diablo Three Ultimate Evil Edition. So Diablo Three has been out for several years now, and they've had a few different editions. But the reason I said Ultimate Evil Edition is because you can get it for ten to fifteen bucks, maybe twenty tops. And Diablo Three is a game that has so much content; it's almost like Witcher. It's hard to even describe um i have several hundred hours into diablo 3 at this point and they continued to add to it they added a whole fifth act and they continue even now seven years later i think since release they continue to add new areas and new missions and stuff to it for free um the ultimate evil edition like i said comes with the reaper of souls expansion it comes with uh the um paladin or the crusader i think they call it in this one and a few other things. There is a newer collection you can find called the Eternal Collection, which includes the new Necromancer, but that's still going for like 40 or $50, and all it really has is the Necromancer, which you can get separately for about 10 bucks, so it's not worth it. So just pick up the Ultimate Evil Edition. You and your friends, uh, you can play online co-op. It is also one of the best couch co-op games because you can play four players on the same screen, and everyone gets their own loot. Um, individually. So no matter who picks up the loot, it assigns it to um, to uh, a specific player. So you don't even have to fight over stuff. You just play, kill monsters all day long, and uh, level up your characters. It's fantastic. One of the best ARPGs ever made. I need to play that one. I always tell you I need to get that one. <laughs> so I just haven't got it yet. Um, okay, my number two is Horizon Zero Dawn. And if you are looking for the vanilla copy, it's literally under ten bucks, uh, eight dollars, whatever, eight ninety nine. I've seen it all the time. If you uh, are wanting to uh, purchase the DLC on PSN Plus, I think it's like fourteen ninety nine, if not twenty bucks now. You can buy the complete edition for fourteen ninety nine all the time. I think Best Buy currently has it on sale right now with the complete edition. For fourteen ninety nine, if you're a, a Best Buy Rewards Program member, um, you know you get it even cheaper than that. So check it out. I think it was. I think it's one of PlayStation's uh, best exclusives this generation. I think it was the best exclusive until God of War came out. And even when it comes to sales numbers, it's uh it's sold very very well, which is why it's so cheap because there's so many used copies out there that they lower the price for it. But great story, great graphics. At the, I think for also for a long time on PlayStation Four, it was the best looking game on the PlayStation Four Pro. So um, check it out. I think the game time or gameplay time you can get out of this one's around forty to fifty hours if you do everything. I think the DLC has been targeted at around five to six hours, if I'm not mistaken, maybe a little bit more. But a must play if you have a PlayStation Four. Yeah, that that was gonna be on my list too. I mean, it, it's so good. I literally just bought the complete edition digitally uh, for a friend of mine on Amazon for fifteen bucks, like two days ago. I mean, it's that good. I mean, it, it's just get it. Why haven't you got it? <laughs> it is fantastic. One of my favorites. In fact, I think I may be in the minority here, but I think if you held a gun to my head and said you could only have God of War or Horizon Zero Dawn, I'd probably choose Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, it, it's really that good to me. Um, and you're right. It is absolutely stunning on like PS4 pro and 4k as well. It's everything about that game is, is excellent. Yeah. I think that would be a, a really close one for me too. The only reason I would like God of War more is just because of the mythology of it. But, um, I think overall gameplay and stuff, I prefer the gameplay in horizon zero dawn over God of War. But, um, yep. Yep. Uh, Ains, why don't you start out with your final pick? Final pick. Uh, well, this is going to shock everyone, but Master Chief Collection. Um, the reason being, and I, I will caveat that we were just talking about this being added to Game Pass, but I wanted to mention it anyway because obviously not everyone has Game Pass, and you can still get this for 10 to 15 bucks digitally. Um, if you want a hard copy, it's a little more expensive. But if you think about what you're getting here, you're getting five complete Halo games, the entire first Halo trilogy with Halo 4, of course, Um you're getting all of those updates we talked about on September 1st with all of the 4K HDR content, all of the new matchmaking, new UI, UI design. Everything we talked about is for free for owners of the game. So, I mean, if you think about um, all of the campaigns you can play, they're all playable in co-op with your friends. They are absolutely 
a blast, one of the best times you have. In fact, Bert and I were just talking about playing through them from beginning to end again. Dan, if you want to maybe get in on that, we could have a blast. Yeah. Um, and then if you think about multiplayer, multiplayer, when you consider Halo 1 through 4, is endless. You, I mean, there are people with thousands and thousands, I would even say tens of thousands of hours of Halo multiplayer under their belts. I'm definitely in the thousands. So if you're just thinking about overall content for your you know, your money bang for your buck, there's, it's really hard to top this unless for some reason you hate Halo. And if you do, please stop listening. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're off the show. No, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that's just, just for the amount of games you can get. I've got that. I'm waiting for, like, I actually, I was thinking of doing the same thing, playing through all four as soon as that update comes out. Cause it's Halo, man, man, it's awesome. No, it's in in like co op playing through those campaigns. It's it's really yeah. really fun. We should definitely do that. I've never done the co op on the Halo. Is it full four player co op games? Or- uh, I I know that um, Halo three and four are. I don't know about one and two. I'd have to go back and check. Yeah, I've never even tried to play four player co op, but we should try that out three player. So, so year, years ago, I don't want to take it off track here, but we did the four player um, legendary achievements on Halo three with a couple of our buddies, Bert, who you know, and the amount of tries it took to get these <laughs> things done was yep. astronomical. But I have every achievement in Halo Anniversary, Halo 3, uh, almost all of them. It's Dang, crazy. Nice. Yeah, I got pretty close. <clears throat> uh, Dan, what's your final number three? So this one, you know, I kind of it was kind of a toss-up for me. Um, but I went with Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, I haven't finished it completely yet, but... What I have played it has been an amazing experience. The, my honorable mention right after that one would have been Journey for the PlayStation um, because I've had so much fun with that game. I'm about halfway through it, I think, on that one too. And it's just games like this, these little indie games, they're, they, they, they go, you know, they, they get missed every once in a while. Like Journey, <clears throat> I didn't even know what it was. Somebody turned me on to it. I was like, oh, that's great. With Ori, everybody kind of knows what it is, but I don't know how many people have actually gone through and played it. So I was one of those people. I've had so much fun, you know, because it's, it's challenging, but not to the point where you're throwing your controller at your television challenging, you know, for me at least, you know, because my dual thumbs. But um, <laughs> um, I think it's a great game. You can usually get it on sale. There's a enhanced edition or a remastered or something like that. Um, for you know, ten bucks usually on any Xbox sale um, on the Xbox store. So when it pops up, I mean, if you don't have it already, which I'm sure a lot of people do, grab it. Totally yeah. worth it. Excellent. And yeah, I think in that big fall se- or uh, spring sale they did, I think it was five bucks. It's like Man. you so, got to yeah. got to own that game. Yep. That's a no brainer. And to your point, uh, Dan, it's it's it can be difficult, but it's fair. I mean, yeah. you automatically know what you did that killed you at that moment. Right. And the one thing I can tell you for people that have not played Ori, learn to save very often. If you don't save very often, you will get very frustrated in that game. Yes. It's so, not hard, guys. Come on. No. Moving on to my number three. <laughs> uh, I'm going with uh, Uncharted 4 for the PlayStation 4. So uh, another running candidate for a really good looking game. I've been on a Uncharted uh, streak lately, trying to play them all again and go through them. The crazy thing about Uncharted 4 is you can get this new many times for under $10. So if we were going on under $10 uh, fine, this would be something you could find. I think I've seen it fairly often for about $8. I think new, most of the time, this is also under the one of the PlayStation 4 greatest hits. It goes for $19.99 if you're trying to get it new somewhere. Regularly on sale for 15 so check it out there. Uh, it's not my favorite Uncharted out of all the Uncharted that exist, but it is probably number two or three uh, as far as stories goes. Um, and it kind of closes out Nathan Drake's um, trilogy slash the fourth game. It's it's the it's a closure for him. So also one of the best endings for any game I've ever played that has a long trilogy or anthology before it. So check it out. Uh, it's only on PlayStation 4 also. Um, it's not a, a remaster. It is a completely new title um, that was not remastered, kind of like the other ones were. Uh, one of my favorites. It is enhanced for the pro, though. Yes, it does have an enhancement for the Pro. So yeah, uh, check that out. Uh, it, it does look very different on Pro compared to PlayStation 4 standards and slim. So yeah, it's gorgeous. Sure. Um, fantastic game. Drake's one of my favorite characters. And uh, what was the name of the the 
old pirate city you get to at one point in that game. I can't remember now. Um, the one with all the, the growth basically over the city. But when I first got there, I was just, I, I think I sat there staring at my screen for a few minutes because of how gorgeous it was. It's fantastic. Yeah. Some of the best water we've ever seen before mm-hmm. and stuff too. And the characters, they were just modeled very, very well. Um, okay. So that's our main topic for today. Like I said, we're going to keep it short due to how much news we had. We still have a couple of their um, fun stuff that we do on our, our vidcast. But once again, if you're looking for any great games to purchase under $20, those are some of our favorites. Um, check them out. You can, like I said, you can find them on Best Buy, you know, Newegg, whatever GameStop that you go to, and you can find them uh, used all the time at any place it has them used. So definitely some gems to pick up from this generation. Um, we're going to move on to our collectible section, which we have a lot of fun with. Um, me and Ains are big collectors. Dan, every once in a while, gets some fun stuff that uh, that he picks up or, or gets gifted. Uh, Ains, you want to kick us off for your uh, collectibles that you've got this week? I know you've got some good stuff. Yeah, I'll be quick here. But um, So I've talked about disc plates before. They are metal artwork that you kind of hang on your wall for your magnets. Uh, really unique. They're done by individual artists. And every order you do from them, they actually plant 10 trees. So it's kind of like an environmental thing as well. Um, they started making bigger ones now. So they used to be like uh, you know a foot, maybe 14 inches tall. I got a bigger one for the centerpiece of my gaming wall. And of course I got Halo, but I thought this was really, really neat. So it's uh, kind of Halo 4 Chief with Cortana. Um, and the detail, uh, the detail probably won't come through on the image, but it is incredible when you see it in person. So very, very neat. Displate.com uh, is the site and they often do discounts and sales as well. So they, you can get some, some decent deals. They're not overly expensive um, if you want to check those out. And then the uh, the other thing I had, which I keep, I think I mentioned last time, I may do a video on. I haven't decided yet. Is this uh, We Happy Few time capsule? This is the big kind of collector's box, and it has um, one of the Bobby masks. It has a, a lit up sign, some artwork, and a bunch of other things. So it's really, really cool box and like lid. It's almost like a chest. Um, <clears throat> it has all the sayings, you know, from the game that I've talked about in my in my reviews. So. Um, really cool. I just, I, I don't know if I'm going to just kind of save it or kind of open everything up and make a video out of it. So let him have that sitting there. Dan, anything from you this week? Any socks or anything? I have no socks. Bio socks. I, I'm out of bio socks. I did not give anything this week. Okay. Well, cool. On the topic of Bioshock socks, I did get a print and it is a really nice print of mm-hmm. Elizabeth holding, nice. um, one of the, what is this? The hook shot, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, or Skyhook, maybe. Skyhook, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, from Infinite, and it's kind of like a um, a different take on her. She wasn't this badass or anything. Um, <laughs> she looks gothic almost. Yeah, she's gothic, and it's from an amazing artist that I actually found through social media, and he does sign every one of them at the bottom here, and he includes another fun little print. You can get it as a 5 by 7 um, or as an 18 by 20 um, and this is one of his amazing prints that I actually just love, so I need to get this framed and going. Um, I also got some more toys. Um, no amiibos. Oh, Please. I was wondering if you're going to mention it. I did find finally the the Cuphead pot, nice. which I had been searching for for a while. I was able to find Mugman everywhere. Um, he was you can find him anywhere. And then, funny enough, on the topic, I got both of the Nathan Drakes <laughs> uh, from the exclusives that were from Target and GameStop. So I picked those up. So those were kind of my fun collectibles this week. Um, and that's all I got. So those, that's just the the small things that I've picked up here and there. Um, let's jump over to uh, season reflections. Um, and Dan, you're going to kick it off for us since uh, you didn't have any collectibles. What do you got for your reflection? Uh, I'm going with Rock Band for the 360, but um, I play it now for the PS4. Um, back in the day, back in the day, uh, <laughs> it was really Rock Band 2, uh, not so much Rock Band 3, and kind of the Beatles Rock Band. And it was always one of those games where I could play with my family. But we could also, you know, my friends and I, you know, could get together and fake jam out on, you know, whatever it is we wanted to. I still go over to my buddy's house every once in a while and we kick it off and play some Rock Band 4 and do some, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> you know, just, it's just a fun social game. We've got the drums, we've got the guitars, the mics. I don't sing, thank God. <laughs> but, you know, it's something also, you know, but me and my family can sit down here and do, you know. I, uh, the other day we were playing and, uh, we got Mr. Biggs, uh, be with you. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, it, it's, it's 
that was n nobody wanted to sing. So my son was supposed to be singing. He literally held that microphone while I was jamming out on the fake guitar. And, you know, it, it's it's one of those games that, you know, it, it's it seems like it's supposed to be, you know, gone and just go away. And but they're still releasing uh, songs for it even today. So um, one of my favorites, you know, I also like Guitar Hero, but this one kind of, you know, came up just because we've been playing it a lot lately. <clears throat> I think, Bert, didn't you mention you and your buddies used to play a lot of that? Used to. We still play almost every other week. <laughs> we, <laughs> talking about. Uh, we have we have our versions on the 360, and we play Rock Band 4, and we have thousands <coughs> of songs purchased. So between all, all four of us that play, we've probably spent about $100 each on the game. Um, and we have the pro drums. We have the pro microphone, funny enough. Um, and we play quite often, so it, it's a blast. Um, Dan, what is your? I'm assuming you're a guitar guy. Yeah, I usually play the guitar. Okay. I, I mean, any more? I used to be able to play on expert level, and I was yep. actually really, really good at it. And now, you know, usually I play on hard. And you know, every once in a while, I'll jump. You know, if it's an easier song, I can I can jump back onto expert, but I just can't do it like I used to. So. Dang, those thumbs still got some spring in them. A little bit. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now, um, uh, I, I do guitar also, and I can probably do eighty percent and stuff on expert, but there's still some of those songs that are just too hard. Um, yeah, there's some. There's some yeah. stuff on there that's ridiculous. Yeah, me and my buddies all have like a dedicated instrument. We have one guy that refuses to give up the microphone. Um, <laughs> it's kind of funny. That's Vincent, by the way. Uh, I was gonna. I already knew. I, as soon as you said that, I knew. Who it was. And then we we got a guy that's on the drums, and he's he, he tries to play everything on expert, but usually fails this out. So we have to knock him back down to hard. Uh, so, but yeah, it's a fantastic game. Sorry to sorry to hijack it there. No, it's good. Um, I'll jump next, Ains, and then you close us out on reflections. But um, I'm doing uh, Super Star Wars for the Super Nintendo, um, the SNES. Uh, this was fantastic back in the day. This is a, about as close as we got to uh, a fantastic game of Star Wars um, at the time that it released. There was even even a Super Empire Strikes Back and a Super mm -hmm. Return of the Jedi that followed them up, and each one of them got better. Um, and it's just some of the funnest side-scrolling games that you'll ever play. I remember going on the speeder as well. There was a great level where you kind of speed along um, Tatooine, which was a lot of fun. Um, but if you haven't played it before, check it out. Um, I'm going to try to capture some footage uh, from the Super Nintendo showing kind of a little bit of the gameplay. It's not it's not easy, which is kind of one of the unfortunate things, but very few games back in the day were super easy that were kind of one of the higher tier games. So that's mine, Super Star Wars. Oh. I was going to say, those are actually pretty challenging games. Um, I remember Empire Strikes Back in particular. In fact, I have those as well. In fact, I think my Return of the Jedi sealed. I have a Dang. sealed copy of it. I don't I don't think it's worth much, but it's still cool to have. But all right, I'm going to take us uh, way, way, way back. So I'm going all the way back to Sega Master System and a little game called California Games. So for those who are not as old as we are, um, this was an old game where you basically did a bunch of uh, activities that were uh, really popular back then. So, and still are in some degree. So you had uh, hacky sacking, you had surfing, you had uh, half pipe skateboarding, you had skateboarding down a street, um, you had uh, BMX biking and a few other things. Um, but you could play, it says here, you could play with eight friends, which was um, really neat back then. That was pretty uncommon. And uh, it, it was just really cool to, just be able to play these things. I mean, back then, these games were so simple in the 8-bit era that being able to kind of replicate or recreate the experience of surfing or skateboarding or something was really fun for kids. So that got a lot of play time uh, for me and my friends back in the day. I'll try to find footage, Ains. I'm not sure how easy it will be to find it, but I'll see if we can show some of it playing. Yeah, you, you may have to show. Um, I think it was more popular on PC. I think the Master System was a port. Um, so hopefully there's some footage out there. Cool. A lot of good games there, guys. Appreciate the season reflections. Always a lot of fun. Unfortunately, we've got to close out our BitCast for this week. So if you've listened, thanks for listening in via podcast or YouTube. Um, we kind of want to talk about some things that are coming down the pipe. So first of all, a little fun giveaway for this week. If you've made it this far, uh, whether you're on YouTube or podcast listening, we're going to be giving away one month of Xbox Game Pass. All you need to do to enter or to be considered is go to our YouTube channel, come to this actual BitCast and simply type in Game Pass in the comments. That'll enter you automatically um, into this. So if you're listening to YouTube, easy for you, just type in Game Pass at the bottom. If you're listening via SoundCloud, iTunes, whatever, jump to our YouTube channel, 
find this video, which should be at the top when you're listening, and type in Game Pass. That puts you in there. A little fun giveaway for our listeners this week. Thanks for listening. And this um, is uh, Big Cast 29 again. Yeah, this Big Cast 29. We're going to be calling it, uh, actually, what are we going to call it, Ains? Um, mm. Gamescom and um, best games under 20 bucks, maybe something along <laughs> that. So <laughs> search for that when entering for that month of, uh, of Game Pass. <laughs> Um, other things that we've done, guys. So we've got a few videos that we've uh, put up recently. Um, we've got the Xbox One Elite controller. So if you have not watched that, this was the Elite controller that did have the shell replaced. And we did do kind of a review of um, kind of the scuff uh, uh, scuff attachments that you can get for it. So take a look at that video. Ains, want to talk about your article real quick? Um, yeah, it's really simple. More of, like I said, a review of We Happy Few. A little um, kind of thought into the story behind it and some of the... Uh, cool things that Compulsion Games put in the title that I think are getting overlooked. I think the game, too many people judged it too quickly. Um, I did mention in the article, I'm getting achievements, story achievements in the game that like 0.4% of people have gotten. So I think a lot of the negative reviews were people who only put a few hours in, which is kind of sad because while the game has some bugs and some challenges, um, it, it has a story that's worth uh, hearing. So anyway, I talk about that. <laughs> I talk about that. <laughs> um, and also about your extra life stuff. What you got going on with that? Uh, yeah. So I think I mentioned this last time, but um, next weekend is Labor Day weekend. It is my 40th birthday, and I'm going to be streaming Cuphead Damn. to try and on expert, which is probably really stupid of me um, to try and. <laughs> <laughs> to try and uh, generate some more um, donations for the kids at, um, oh God, why am I blanking on the name? Basically the KU uh, Children's Hospital. So that is the charity that I play for. I've generated over $500 already this year. I really want to get to a thousand. So I'm hoping this can uh, help put me towards that. So if you want to get on and see me get frustrated and see Cuphead on Expert kick my ass for a little while, and eventually hope I kick its ass. Um, we'll see what happens. But that'll be next weekend. It'll be on our site. I haven't scheduled it yet. I'm trying to coordinate with actually Studio MDHR to see if they'll promote it a little bit. So we'll see what happens there. Cool. Dan, any, any new stuff coming from you? Where can we find you? You can find me here. Actually, <laughs> yeah. um, we uh, uh, on the other podcast, dude, we, just, we just did our triumph of the return on digital hoarders so you can find me there it was pretty mediocre at best it was mostly a it was we knew what we were doing it was mostly a you know hey is this going to work is our, our computers you know working at this point because we've had some technical issues mm -hmm. so i think next week we'll be starting uh bringing in some more guests and stuff like that so should be fun there also love doing this so it's you know i'm pretty blessed to be able to do a couple podcasts it's pretty awesome talk with some people Excellent. otherwise twitter always there doing something <laughs> whatever cool yeah. all right folks well uh, we'll go ahead and close it out if you haven't subscribed to us over here make sure to click the subscribe button that i'm pointing to at the moment and if you want to follow any of our newer videos we're going to be linking them right here for you thanks for listening in and catch us on the next video or bitcast that we do peace